All right, guys, we're going to get started. Um, so first, I want to welcome everybody. On the screen it says Class of 2025, because this presentation was originally designed as our incoming for incoming freshmen. I realized we have some additional students in the room. Um, we have students who may be new to the district. You might be a sophomore or a junior. I don't think we have, do we have any new seniors to the district? Any new juniors, 11th graders? You're, you're going to be a junior. OK. And then we have 10th uh, graders. So the freshmen are going to be the incoming class of 2025. Juniors will be class of 2024. And then obviously sophomores will be class of 2023. All right, but well, welcome. Welcome to Cedar Grove High School, whether you're new to the district or um, new to the school. I say this to all of our classes, and I'm going to say, you'll probably hear me say this a lot this year, but it's a great time to be a Panther, right? I'm going to say it to the seniors and the juniors um, during our class meetings and the sophomores, but I'll say for you guys as new students, whether you're coming in as freshmen or new to the district, it truly is a great time to be a Panther. We have a lot of great long-standing traditions, experiences, and opportunities here in Cedar Grove that you'll be able to take full advantage of. But you guys will also will be introducing some new initiatives and some new programs that you guys as freshmen or sophomores or possibly even juniors will have the opportunity to, uh, to have an experience with. So we'll take a look at some of our Cedar Grove High School highlights before I get into our introductions and, and everything like that. At Cedar Grove High School, we have 15 AP courses. AP courses are advanced placement courses those are courses that you can take in high school, taught by a high school teacher. At the end of the AP course, you can take the AP exam. If you score high enough on the AP exam, you can earn college credit or advanced standing when you go off to college, which is a huge deal financially. It can save you and your family a lot of money, um, and it's a really great opportunity for you as students. We have dual enrollment agreements with four colleges. What dual, dual enrollment is, is it's an agreement between a high school and a college that basically says your students can take this course, whether it's taught in your building or on the college campus, and they can earn high school and college level credit. All right? So many of our dual enrollment classes are classes that are taught right here in the building by Cedar Grove High School teachers. All right? Those teachers, teachers went through a certification process, students successfully complete the course, they can then earn credit with Syracuse or Fairleigh Dickinson or Kane University, right? Great opportunity for our students. Those credits, those are college credits they earn that can also be transferable to other courses. So say you take a Syracuse dual enrollment program, you don't necessarily need to go to Syracuse. You can transfer those credits to another college. Awesome opportunity for our, for our students. A new initiative that started this coming year with this year's seniors is the PAID program through Montclair State University. We have an opportunity here where students in their senior year can be high school students in the morning and college students in the afternoon. So you would come here, you would take your four classes here at Cedar Grove in the morning. When everybody goes to lunch, you get in your car or public transportation, you ride over to Montclair State and you take college level courses that again can be used at Montclair State or are transferable to many other colleges and universities throughout the nation. So you're probably thinking, why is he telling me about this? I'm a freshman. All I want to know is, when do I eat lunch? Where's my locker, right? You need to know this because in a few minutes, the counselors are going to talk to you about the importance of freshman year and the importance of sophomore year, the importance of getting off to a strong start, getting involved, building your resume, um, taking taking challenging courses that can lead to more challenging courses, and opening yourself up to courses, things like dual enrollment courses and uh, AP courses. Here at, um, I know we have some athletes here. We have a highly competitive sports program here at Cedar Grove School District. We have award-winning theater arts program. If you haven't seen any of the plays, they're amazing. We have brand new this year for the class of 2025, and we're also accepting sophomores into this program. We have a STEAM pathway program where students who are interested in STEAM, now what's STEAM? Science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. If you're interested in that field at all, you can enter this pathway and over the course of four, three or four years, develop a portfolio that you can use to apply to college. And at this point, we've even developed a new course called product design 
where students, if they're involved in the STEAM pathway, they can actually create a product, go through the whole process of creating it, and even marketing it, and possibly even selling it through, through a system like Etsy. We're going to introduce our Zen Den this year. Our Zen Den is a, is a room here in the building that is going to support the emotional transition back to in-person learning here at Cedar Grove High School. We are thrilled that we're coming back to, to full day learning. No more half day schedule, no more cohorts. It's wonderful, it's great. But we also understand it's a transition for our students. Many of our students may have not attended school at all last year. Many of them only half days and only for part of the year. It's a transition, it's going to be, it's going to be difficult, and we get that. We've created this room called a Zen Den, similar to like a yoga studio where we're gonna do mindfulness, and uh, meditation and things like that. It's very cool. Our counselors will, um, will, will be staffing that room and we'll have more information on that later. So what's ahead? Some of the highlights that are coming ahead. We, um, as I said earlier, you guys as being incoming freshmen or incoming students in the district, you're in a prime um, opportunity to experience some of these new initiatives that we have going on. We are developing, we're in the process, the early stages of developing a college and career center. So the idea is, you're still, in, you're still at Cedar Grove High School, you're still walking the halls, but when you step into this room, for a short period of time, you step outside of Cedar Grove High School and you step into a college setting, right? It's a place where you can do college searches and you can ask questions and you can work on your college essay or do scholarship, uh, scholarship searches or whatnot. Um, so it's a really unique place that, that we're creating we're, we're very excited about that. We are developing a career internship program where students in their senior year can have the opportunity, if they're in good graduation standing, to sort of put their high school classes on hold and go off into the community and have real life internship experiences. So say you're interested in uh, healthcare. You as a senior could take possibly the last month of your high school career and you can go intern underneath a doctor or a nurse or a dentist or a physical therapist. Uh, say you're interested in, um, you know, joining the law force at some point. You can intern with uh, at the police station or with a lawyer or a judge or something like that. So again, it could be a great opportunity for our students. We are looking at expanding our dual enrollment opportunities. We're in talks right now with NJIT, New Jersey Institute of Technology, and Rutgers University, and many and other district, and other universities as well. We're looking at the Pathways program I talked about with Steam. We're looking to expanding our pathways programs to business, and, business, science, and art. So students who have an interest that maybe isn't STEAM, maybe it's business or art or whatnot, they can do a pathway and develop a portfolio in their desired uh, career field. We're bringing in a new esports club um, and, and courses as well that we're going to build around that. If you're not familiar with esports, get familiar. It's a very um, growing trend here in New Jersey, um, especially you know in the gaming field, and we're very excited to bring in some new some new hardware and software to get the esports club going. That's something we expect to get off the ground very soon, and some exciting new electives that will be coming. We already we already released some this year, but in next year we'll be releasing even more electives for our students. All right. <laughs> So I want to go through some introductions. I, I probably should have introduced myself first. I'm Mr. Bear. I'm the principal here at Cedar Grove High School. I want to introduce Ms. Inglis, our vice principal. Mr. Gogarty is our athletic director. Mr. Gogarty is also the head football coach. So they're, at, um, they're busy today. They have a scrimmage, right? Yeah, so Mr. Gogarty couldn't be here um, today, but you'll get to know Mr. Gogarty pretty well. We also have our school counseling department. We have two school counselors. Ms. Testa, Ms. Testa works with students A through Jerawala, and I apologize if I butcher a name. Ms. Sloda, any of you coming from the middle school should know Ms. Sloda. We stole her, she's ours now, she's not going back. So we're very excited about that. Ms. Sloda's on our team, she's students Jordan through Z. They will be your counselors until you graduate Cedar Grove High School. So you'll want to develop a rapport with them early on. We also have Ms. LaFoon, who is our student assistance counselor. Ms. LaFoon's position here at Cedar Grove High School kind of runs the whole gamut, right? She does everything that's in the social and emotional realm. She can help with if you're having problems with stress, or organization, 
or the transition back to full day in-person learning, any of that, you know, Miss uh, Miss Lafoon's there for you, and really any of the counselors or myself and Miss Inglis are also there for you as well. But a great resource, um, all three of them. Before I hand the mic off, I want to talk just about a couple of things. Two things, two main points. If you hear, if you take anything away from my presentation, the most important thing about my job here at Cedar Grove High School is student safety, right? So you're going to hear a lot today about our attendance policies and uh, our, what, how does lunch work and um, uh, HIV, which I'm sure you've heard before, harassment, intimidation, and bullying. Right, we don't put that up there just to scare you. We put that up there because we want you to, to have a, a solid experience here at Cedar Grove High School. And your safety and security is our number one most important thing we do. So pay attention. Um, when we go through those slides. And, um, and the second thing I want to talk about is student opportunities. All right, You heard me just rattle off a bunch of information that probably, for some of you, might have went over your heads because you're probably thinking again, why is he telling me this? All right, But what those are is those are student opportunities, dual enrollment opportunities, college opportunities, internships, amazing opportunities for our students that don't happen in every high school. All right? We're bringing those opportunities in because we believe firmly that putting opportunities in front of you guys as students is our job. But your job as students is to take advantage of those opportunities, right? To put yourself on a track or in a position where you're on track to graduate, your attendance is good, you don't have discipline issues, you've taken challenging courses so that you can go on to take AP courses, so that you can experience the paid program at Montclair State and do some of these internship uh, programs that we have in place. <coughs> All right. At this time, I'm going to hand it off to our counselors who are going to talk about scheduling and the importance of freshman year. Thank you. Welcome, everybody. Nice to see some familiar faces. Oh, Thank you so much for a couple of new students. Um, I wanted to talk about the importance of freshman year. I know we have some sophomores here who are here also. And I think this message is good for anyone who's coming back to school in a few weeks. Um, getting off to a really good start is important. It's important for freshmen as you come in uh, to a brand new environment. It's also important for anyone coming back to school to really work hard from the minute you get here. We all know how it is. You can start off and say, eh, I want to feel my friends, which is very important. But I'll, you know, the homework can wait till later. Or I don't have to study for this test until, you know, the night before or whatever else. The best thing that you can do is to get off to a really, really, really good start. Start establishing really good work habits. Start establishing um, a route for you to go if you need assistance. We're here for you. We're here to help you with whatever you need. And those things in combination with us working with you as a team is exactly what I think you guys need in order to be successful. For the freshmen who are here, even the sophomores that I know, obviously a brand new school, school year is always a brand new slate, right? You guys are growing up. You guys are um, coming into a new environment. I know that we had, you know, unfortunately some rough circumstances in terms of, you know, the not being having a consistent schedule. Well, now we do, and we will. We're very excited about that. So let's start fresh. Don't worry about the things that happened last year. One of the most, uh, the funniest things I remember about working at the middle school and talking to students is some students would be in eighth grade and they'd be like, Miss Lewis, I had a problem with so-and-so when we were in kindergarten. Time to let go. It's a brand new school year, a brand new opportunity, and let's make the most of it. And showing consistent effort is really important. Really important to say, hey, you know what? The first marking period is as important to me as the fourth marking period, right? The, this test, you know, is as important to me as the next test. Consistent effort is not only good for your grades, but it's good for you to build a set skill, right? To show consistency, so that when you do pursue different opportunities after high school, this is not a new thing, this is not a new thing for you, you already have this established within yourself. Okay. Okay. Hi everybody, I'm going to talk about your grade point average and how important that is and what that is. I'm sure some of you have heard that and you don't even know what it really is. A grade point average, the definition is a single cumulative number that represents your academic career. So what does that mean? So for every grade you earn, you earn a number that goes with that. So an A is worth four, a B is worth three, a C is worth two, a D 
inverse 1 and then that's inverse 0. Now, if you were to take those higher level classes that we've talked about and really push yourself to an honor class or an AP class, that can actually bring you up over a 4 point now. So an AP class, for example, could be an A would be 5, and an honor class, for example, could be a 4.5. So it's, um, it's going to boost your grade up over that 4.0 and make you stand out against your peers. Because when you're applying for college, that's what you want. You want to be set apart. You want to have taken the most uh, challenging classes and really push yourself so that you stand out so when they see your application they say, oh, look at this student really took advantage of everything that your girlfriend told them to offer. Okay. So, getting involved is extremely, extremely important. I know I've always stressed this with the students who have had me already, but it's extremely important now that you are building a resume as you get yourself ready to apply to colleges and so on and so forth. And this isn't something that you can start senior year. This is something that you should really be looking at now. Um, volunteering is extremely important. So we're going to talk more about the uh, volunteering process and all that in a little bit. Clubs. There are so many clubs here. Um, I know that we are always introducing new ones. I know that, you know, Mr. Bayer is going to talk more about them later on, or Mr. English, and they're going to talk about, you know, opportunities that you guys have come up with and have put into fruition. Um, it's, a, it's really important for you to get involved in those so that you can not only meet, meet friends and talk to new people, but so you have somewhat of an idea as to maybe what your interests are, and that'll give you more of a streamlined, you know, uh, path to what you want to do after high school. Sports. A lot of you just came here from sports practices. I love the idea of working as a team. I love the idea of underclassmen and upperclassmen working together and being able to form that type of team dynamic. So it's really important to get involved in that way. All school council. You have some members here who are part of the all school council. For those of you who are freshmen and are just coming in for the first time, this is what we have in middle school for student council. Jobs. You know, it's important to get some experiences. It might not be a bad idea to say, hey, you know what, I have some extra time during my off season. Maybe I want to make some extra cash, you know, working with this, you know, place, that place, whatever it might be. Let's build that resume. Let's get different experiences on your resume so that when it's time for us to write your letter of recommendation, we're able to emphasize those points when we write our letter. Being a part of the school community, there are so many opportunities for you to do this, right? Um, whether we have assemblies, whether we have, you know, when we have uh, meetings with your, with your classes, it's important to be a part of that community. If we have spirit grand days, wear the clothes, you know, wear the Cedar Grove clothes, wear them proudly. I know that, you know, as a team, that's what we're doing today, right? We're all on unison, kind of working together to show that we mm -hmm. are a team and it's super important to us. And next is character and opportunity. What does this mean? I can tell you that in working in this school district my entire career, I love this school district, I love the students here, the families have always been wonderful. The one thing that I think makes these students stand out is that their character is beyond incredible. And when you do have such a strong character, that really helps us to create new opportunities for you. It gives us ideas, it makes us want to create these opportunities as well. So also really stood out. Maybe we can get them involved with X, Y, or Z. <clears throat> so show everyone who you are. Don't be afraid to just do the things that your friends are doing. If you like something, give it a try, and then we can work with you as a team to make sure that we point you in the right direction. Okay, guys, like Mr. Bayer said, I, my main role is to support you guys both socially and emotionally um, and any way I can enhance your academic success. I also run the community service program. So shortly, you guys will receive an email from me explaining what our community service program is and what it's about, what the expectations are. We utilize a program called X2Vol. Um, it's a simple online tracking and recording platform so that you guys can record your hours and service hours. So we utilize it for not only our community service program, but if you are a part of the All School Council, NHS, if you do volunteering outside of school on your own, this is a simple, easy, paperless way for you guys to kind of record your hours on here. So when you start looking at colleges, start applying for scholarships, it's all in one place for you and it's super, super easy. Um, and the great thing now is that we're back, we're full time, we're not virtual. I usually like to have assemblies with the freshmen and upperclassmen are more than welcome to get a refresher. Uh, the counselors will also be helping as well. We'll kind of go through the whole program with you guys, showing you how it works, how to implement your hours. 
and we'll go through the program as well. So if you guys have any questions, if there's anything we can clarify, we can do it all in, in one assembly and hopefully like one or two assemblies and you guys get to, to get involved and see what's out there for community service. Now we have the program that we use. You're going to use it all through your four years of school. Um, in your earlier years, in your freshman year, sophomore year, we'll do um, programs with you about um, personality surveys, interest, career interest surveys, and just to try to help you define the direction of where you want to go. In your junior and senior year, you're going to use it more for college search. It's a great search engine. It gives you information on every college, and everything is always in the same spot, so no matter what school you're looking up. Gives you all the same information about that school and every format that's exactly the same. Um, and then we also use it to send your letter of recommendation to colleges and your transcripts and how you send all of the documentation that they need so that you can apply to school. So now the answer is something that you're going to use through all four years and you'll get a nice introduction in your freshman and sophomore year. Scheduling. So I'm sure many of you have your schedules already. For those of you who are freshmen, you should have them in that folder that we handed out to you in, uh, outside the auditorium. Um, but to view your schedule, you very simply can go to the Cedar Grove website, the Panther Parent Guide, and on there it leads you to benefits. You log on to benefits, and then you're able to um, view your child's schedule. You guys, can, if your parents give you access, you can look at your own schedule, and you'll be able to see what you're scheduled for once school starts. Um, in terms of scheduling questions and concerns, we have in those folders as well, um, there are two forms. One is a class uh, change form, where you're able to, um, if there's a course that you're, you're saying, I'm not really sure if I want to take this elective, <coughs> or if you're missing something, you can fill that out and we will fix that for you. Um, we do ask that if you are taking an honors or an AP class, some kind of upper level class, that you do wait the two weeks, first two weeks of school to try it out. And after that, there's another form that you can fill out if you do think that you need to make that change, okay? So both of those forms will be available to you. The next thing is credit requirements. So we check the room schedules, but you should always look yours over and just double check. Every freshman and sophomore should have 40 credits. You should all have an English, a math, a science, a history, a foreign language, and a CE class. So those are your six core classes that every student should have. And then you have room for two electives, period. Um, juniors and seniors can have study goals, so they can have 35 credits, um, but freshmen and sophomores can not. You need 130 credits in order to graduate from high school from Cedar Grove. That is four years of English, four years of TV, three years of math, three years of science, three years of history, one year of foreign language, and financial literacy, half year, practical art, or business type art, full year, and a fine art, a full year class. That is just to graduate, that's the minimum. Um, we always expect you to do more than just the minimum. Again, that's what we talked about with rigor and stress of schedule and trying to push yourself. So we do recommend a fourth year of math, a fourth year of science, a fourth year of history, and more than one year of foreign language. Most four-year colleges require two years of foreign language in high school, but like I said, those are the basic requirements in order to graduate. So we need to do more than this. Last question.
going through that for studying or just simply de-stressing and hanging out yeah, with your friends. Okay, so what is new this year is um, we're putting in a homeroom. So homeroom and lunch never rotate out of the schedule, okay? So if we look at day one, okay, if you look at your schedule, you know your schedule, period one is the first class on a day one. Then periods two, three, lunch, five, six, and seven. Now the trick to the rotating drop off schedule is that the class that meets first in the morning and right after lunch, those are the classes that drop the next day. So on a day one, what classes would drop for a day two? Periods what? One and five, the first period of the day and the one right after lunch. So they drop for the next day. So automatically on a day two, you start with second period. Now, homeroom is always right before the second block of the day. We do that because, I'm sorry, seniors have um, study halls and they are able to sign in late. So when attendance is taken, our daily attendance, which is populated from our attendance secretary, is taken during this homeroom period. It's a five minute window when you report to homeroom, okay? It's very important that you are on time to homeroom because once again, your attendance for the day to make sure that everybody's in the middle of the day, when we start calling parents, let them know that students are out sick, it's based on that homeroom attendance. If for some reason you're late or you miss homeroom, we're going to ask that you go to the main office and see Ms. Codis. She is our attendance secretary. Um, this is an example schedule. So if you see on the left, there are eight periods in the day. But on a day one, only six of those eight are needed. And a day two, also six, but they rotate through. Again, going back to that first period in the morning and the period right after lunch, dropping. It's a four-day rotation. So we have a day one, two, three, and four. After we get to day four, what day comes up next? What do you think? Uh, you're back to one. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. We rotate the room. It may seem confusing for our new students or our freshmen if you haven't lived through the schedule. After about a week and a half, you probably will have, after you go through it probably twice, you'll get the hang of it, right? Matthew Shoulder over there is waving. These are our upperclassmen, and there is look through the schedule. Uh, in your folders, there is a blank template, and for our upper level students who don't have folders, Ms. Testa has blank templates where you can take your schedule and plot it in like this, which would give you the availability to either take a picture of it, or put it in your folder, or tape it to the front of your folder, so as you're walking class to class, you say, oh, it's uh, 9.13 on a day two, I have to go to um, period three or my phys ed class, okay? I highly recommend you filling out those forms and the test is gonna give you and then taking a picture just so you have it accessible at all times. Guys, if you don't have a folder, just quickly raise your hand real quick. Thank you, Mr. Okay, like I just previously said, we are having this homeland every day after first block on our regular bell schedule. It leads from 9.05 to 9.10. The purpose of the homeland is just not for attendance. It's also to run activities and to have class meetings. So sometimes we'll have what's called a uh, extended homeroom. We have a schedule for that where we'll ask the sophomores to come down to auditorium and have a class meeting with you to talk about upcoming fundraising, events that are happening in the school, car washes, things like that. We also will use it for activities, some type of things that are outside of the content, meaning that the counselors may come in and talk about activities for college or the college career center that we're building, or things that are going on in Naviance and expectations. You'll see it, the seniors will see it for, you know, um, filling out those application processes and we get forward to get further ready for graduation. So it's a great window of time that we can use to really uh, pinpoint things that we need to information, disseminate information that we need to get to you. Okay? Okay. This year, we are back to changing for 
for the day. So um, you will have two lockers assigned to you in the building. One is already assigned to you on your schedule. So if you look at that horizontal schedule and you go to the left-hand side, right above the block, your locker number is on there. Okay, that is your locker number. Every student in the school has one. That is your sign. You must bring in your own lock for your locker. Now, your locker is your space to hold personal things, your backpacks, your devices. It is very important for security reasons that you do not give anybody else your, um, your uh, what do you call it? Combination, thank you so much. Combination for your locker. Because if you don't start giving it out and people are using your locker and something goes missing, I really don't have a way to help you. It's very important. This is your secure space. Um, but make sure that you're locking it in your secure period whenever you're accessing it. The second locker that you will have will be for fit ed, for changing. A lot of times, students go into those locker rooms, they leave their backpacks um, you know, on the benches, they walk out and they don't lock up their personal things. It's really important. Make sure you lock up anything that's valuable. Okay? The fifth ed department will talk, to more, will talk to you more about that in the coming days when you start preparing for changing for fifth ed. All right? um, hallways, you know, the high school has more flexibility than middle school. It really does. We have teachers in the hallways, we have full duty people, we have security cameras, but you do have more flexibility because you're growing up. We do expect that when we give you that, that you know, freedom, that you don't take advantage. We don't want to see you hanging out in the room in bathrooms, in hallways. You know, that just leads to trouble. So we're asking that you make sure that when that bell rings, you are where you're supposed to be. Right? Not only can you be, you know, disciplined for it, which I hate to use that word, but also an academic level, if you're not in class, you can miss key things that are happening at the beginning. Do now, or extra credit assignments, anything like that. So pay attention to that bell. When the bell rings, you are supposed to be in your classroom. Um, some, we have multiple layers, and you know, Mr. Bayer has said that our primary responsibility is your safety. Your safety um, is absolutely paramount in this building. We have something called HIV. I know that you have been well versed on this in middle school and prior, but we just wanted to remind you that this is a law. If you feel that you are being harassed, intimidated, or bullied going in the school, please, our doors are open. We will take everything seriously. We will investigate to our fullest potential. So you have to let us know. Additionally, if you see something, say something. Now you see something that you know is wrong, you know what, I know it's hard to be that person, but it's the right thing to do. You could be saving somebody else. Um, you could report to myself, you could report to Mr. Bayer, Ms. Spencer, Ms. Soda, Mr. Lagoon, or uh, a, a teacher that you feel comfortable with. And maybe you don't feel comfortable coming down to us, but maybe you feel comfortable with your math teacher. So if there's something that you know is just not right and sitting right with you, call somebody. We'll do the best we can. We want to make sure everybody feels safe emotionally and physically. All right, attendance. Now, in high school, attendance is mandatory. Okay? It's mandatory at grade level, but for graduation requirements, we have to report to the state how many absences you have. If you go over your allotted attendance amount, you could be subject to having to repeat the course or dropping credit. So it was one of those core classes that Ms. Testa had spoken about, English, which you need four years of, and you go over your a lot of absences, you will have to retake, even if you have an A in English, you'll have to retake it in summer school. Okay? So this is very important. For a senior group, you are allowed 14 absences for a full year course, seven for a semester or a half year course. 11 for physical education because it's three marking periods, and four for health. If you go over these amounts, what happens is there is an appeals process. You would fill out the appeal paperwork, and then the committee would review all of your documentation. Please understand that there are no excused absences. Okay? Everything is unexcused. That's as per the state, except for there are, you know, obviously death in the family. 
term religious politics. So there are some outliers, but everything else is unexcused. So you will not see an excused absence in Genesis. You will only see unexcused. Um, question about that. I will tell you that and this did come up this morning for COVID purposes. Um, you, there's no virtual option, which I'm sure you all have heard. However, if there's a COVID quarantine because you are close contact or you are positive or quarantined, then we will have a virtual option. And you must attend your classes virtually like you did last year. And, and then you will be marked as present virtual. Those will not be held against, against you for those daily actions. But that is only for COVID. That is not because you have a stomach flu, that is not because you woke up and you sprained your ankle. It's only for COVID purposes. Okay, okay lunch. All freshmen will be eating in the main cafeteria. Um, this is standard. This is what we do. Everybody gets lunch. You have a full hour. The only time you are permitted to leave that cafeteria is if you have a lab. So labs run, for those of you who don't know, Labs, when you have a lab class, it's only, in a, in a fall, the period before lunch or the period after lunch. Your lab is either the first half of lunch or the second half of lunch. We extend that period to a 90 minute window. So on a day one, if you have lunch period, th I'm sorry, if you have lab period three, which would be the period before lunch, you would get out of lab at 11.25 and then proceed to the cafeteria. So your, your lunch is shortened. And that's one day of your rotation schedule. If on day one, you have uh, biology period five, at 11.25 when the bell rings halfway through lunch, you would go to your lab and then stay there through period five. So it's essentially that 90 minute block. It gives you a period and a half once a week. <coughs> Excuse me. You are also allowed to see teachers. Um, however, you must have a pass. You can use study hall, the media center, if they fire study hall, you can use that. But um, <coughs> we only allow a certain amount of students in there. So that's on a first come, first serve basis. Juniors and seniors will be leaving as long as they filled out their permission slips for lunch this year. And sophomores have the option of being in the main cap or the junior cap. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Cedar Grove has over 30 different um, clubs. Three new clubs will be piloted this year, and they were all brought to us by students. We encourage you that if you have an idea that you want to see through, please come see us. We love to increase our clubs, activities, things that make the school better for you. Okay? 16 different sports, lots of opportunities for community service with Mr. Lafoon. <coughs> and you, again, you're always encouraged to come to the table. Bring it to Mr. Bear and myself. Look, some of these guys are graduated. Right here. So this group of students right here, they're graduating in nine months. And I'm going to ask them at the end of the school year, they're going to say, it went really fast. Okay? It goes by like that. So you have four years, or whatever time you have left at the high school, to try something new. Take advantage of these opportunities. Do something outside of your comfort zone. Because if you just try something, even if you don't like it, you can't <coughs> look back once you're done and say, I never did that. I didn't really know what that was about in high school. Try something new. Put yourself out there. Meet new people. Okay? This is going to be a great year. We look forward to having all of you back in the building. We're super excited. And uh, we're going to start strong in 10 days, right? Yes? No, stop it. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Thanks, Ms. English. You're welcome. All right, guys, you good? All right, hang in there. We have a few more slides left. We'll get going with these tours a little bit. Oh, quick show of hands. How many incoming freshmen, whether you went to the middle school or not? How many freshmen are in the middle school? Okay. So you probably see a, a class that's on your schedule called Math Lab and ELA Lab, right? They're two semester courses. All right, that's different than the lab that Ms. Inglis was talking about. Ms. Inglis was talking about your biology lab, which kind of partners with lunch one or two days a week. What I'm talking about is math lab and ELA lab. So if you're a freshman and you've had older siblings come through the school, or you're a parent and you've had older children come through the school, you'll remember that freshmen 
all took financial literacy for a semester and communication literacy for a semester in their freshman year. Okay, what that stems from is about seven or eight years ago, the state of New Jersey came out and said, financial literacy for half, for half a year for a semester is now a graduation requirement. So schools all over New Jersey kind of scrambled, well, how are we gonna fit this into our schedule? At that time, Cedar Grove decided, we're gonna make all freshmen take the course, and we're gonna partner with this course called Communication Literacy, and that's gonna be a full year class for their freshman year. Seven or eight years later, we're getting feedback from our teachers that basically say the financial literacy class, which teaches all about balancing a checkbook, credit cards, a little bit into like the stock market, and you know, bank accounts and money, that those skills that the freshmen are learning aren't really relevant to where they to where they are in their development. And would be much more appropriate for students in their sophomore, junior, or senior year. Okay, so when you partner that with the fact we're coming off of a year and a half of COVID, and we're still in the middle of it, as we all know, unfortunately, and all the talks about learning loss, we said we have a prime opportunity to build these math classes and these ELA lab classes to further support the current level English and math classes and to build those foundational skills that are necessary to get to higher level courses in greater years and to also help reduce learning loss that may have occurred during coronavirus. Uh, whether it was you know, uh, virtual instruction or hybrid instruction or all the shuffling and tra transitioning that we did over the past year and a half. So, all freshmen this year will take a semester of ELA 9 lab and a semester of math lab. Now the math lab is either going to be algebra lab or geometry lab, depending on what class, what, what normal math class that student is taking. So if you're enrolled in geometry, you'll do geometry lab, whether it's honors or, or regular academic lab. English 9, everybody's going into English 9 lab. Those classes are designed to support and supplement current math and ELA classes, help develop and strengthen foundational skills necessary for success in current and future math and ELA classes, identify and work to address learning loss, and they will all be on a pass-fail basis. Right? So you won't receive a grade. They will go on your transcript, okay? but you will receive a P or an F, depending on how you do in that class. I'm assuming it's mostly going to be P's because I know we're going to put in that time and the work to be successful in those classes. I also would like to point out that as a secondary gain from these classes, we expect, we expect it to have a positive impact on the standardized test scores, including SAT, PSAT, and ACT scores later in uh, your high school career. Here's a little bit about the math lab and the LA lab that I just talked about. Both classes will happen as a semester in the fall or the spring. So you're either going to have math lab in the fall, the LA lab in the spring, or vice versa. Kind of rotate. I want to give a, a brief little overview of our STEAM pathway program that I mentioned earlier. As I discussed, we're going to be doing pathways moving forward in many of our elective areas, including business and art. And you're going to have this great opportunity take three to four years worth of electives to build a portfolio that you could use to apply to colleges, to transition into college, or possibly, possibly even go directly into the workforce for some of our students. STEAM is the pilot, is our pilot pathway program that we're introducing this year. Students in the class of 2025 and 2024 are eligible for this program. That's freshmen or sophomores. STEAM is science, technology, engineering, art, and mathematics. A pathway can be defined as a sequence of courses focusing on a specific area of study. So if you're in a pathway, you have a, you have a particular interest in, say, let's call it STEAM. Let's call it business, for that matter. You have an interest in business, right? You're thinking, I'm going to go into uh, foreign business affairs at some point you know, college, or that's going to be my career, or whatever. It would make sense for you to take introduction to business. It would make sense to take a course that builds upon intro to business, maybe business too, if we introduce that class week four. It would make sense to take accounting classes. It would also make sense to take three to four years of a world language, 
if you're talking about going into foreign business affairs, right? So what we're talking about doing with these pathways is bringing all of that coursework together in a culminating portfolio project in your senior year so that you can present and earn credit for this, this program that will also help you apply to colleges and show those colleges that you took a themed approach in a high school education, demonstrated a commitment to an area of interest, and exhibited a depth of knowledge in a selected area of study. Something that really will help set Cedar Grove High School students apart from other students. Because remember, at the end of the day, if we're applying to colleges, we're up against students from all over the state, all over the country. What sets your application apart from the other 50 applications sitting in front of them? All right? From students from Verona, from students from West Orange, or wherever else. What sets you apart? Okay? Well, you want to introduce, you're looking to um, college major in you know, chemical engineering. Now you're physics. And now you've got this theme pathway in your transcript that really stands out to a college. The reason I'm talking about it today is because it is still available for any student who wants to enroll if they're a freshman or a sophomore. If you are interested, you would email your counselor, Ms. Testa or Ms. Slota, and say, hey, I want to change my electives around. Can I get into this theme pathway? This is what it would look like for you in freshman year. You would enroll in STEAM Engineering for a semester and STEAM Intro to Computer Science. If you're a sophomore, you would also go into that as well if you're interested in this program. From there, you would move on either into the engineering side of the pathway or the computer science side of the pathway, and you would follow down those paths for sophomore and junior year. In senior year, you'd be enrolled in STEAM Product Design, which is a course that will focus on identifying a need and creating a product that will help address that need, which then can be marketed and possibly even sold um, through some sort of um, format like Etsy or something like that. So it's a really cool opportunity. Seniors this year aren't taking that capstone course, that STEAM product design course, because they've had many of, the, um, many of these courses in one way or another. But to, to experience the full pathway program, you have an opportunity now as a freshman or a sophomore to get into that. I want to quickly highlight some upcoming events. Um, we have our back to school night on Thursday, September 23rd at 6.30 p.m. Parents are obviously invited to attend that. Students, we will have a fall club fair during lunch on Friday, September 24th. You've heard us talk a lot throughout this presentation about getting involved, building your resume, being a part of the school culture. Go to the club fair, check some things out, and try to get yourself involved. In a few minutes, we're going to break into groups, and you guys are going to do a tour of the building. Now, let me just note that we're at the very end of the summer. There's some last minute cleaning going on to get the building ready. We have a video shoot going on right now. Many of you know we shoot a lot of commercials and videos, and um, Agencies come in here and they use our building to make these videos and commercials. There's one going on right now. Fortunately, there's no major famous celebrities that I can share with you this time. Um, but when you're on your tours, you may bump into um, you know, a big film shoot going on and say, what the heck is going on? That's what it's about. Or they might be in the middle of a scene and you're wondering what's, what's going on. That's what it's about. We're also updating our security cameras throughout the building. So if you see a lot of wires and men working on you know, hanging things, that's, that's what you're looking at. At the end of your tour, our, um, our student leaders are going to bring you to the media center where, you're gonna, where every student will be assigned a Chromebook for the, the 2021-2022 school year. You'll sign the Chromebook out. Now, parents in attendance. Somewhere in the near future, you're going to get an email where you're going to have to sign a consent form for the Chromebook, and there's also a $26 fee that goes along with the Chromebook. It's a yearly fee that we have to pay the Chromebook company. Um, so you'll pay it freshman, sophomore, junior, senior year. That'll go out shortly. All right, at this point, I will break off into tours. Now, we don't have quite as many students as we had thought. So we were thinking maybe um, if you guys want to partner in groups of, do you want to do groups of two? Do you want to just do two, two large groups, two groups of four?